Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our tropical depression number three that is out there in the Gulf that poses a major risk to the Gulf Coast of the United States. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do the weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know which state, if any, will see the most impacts from this storm if you had to make some sort of prediction or guess. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video when we're looking at this beautiful satellite imagery here from our tropical depression. That is a beautiful storm out there, and it is intensifying very, very quickly. As you can see, some of those circular areas there in the satellite is areas of rapid intensification there of those thunderstorms and showers, which is all just going to lead to the intensification of the entire storm as a whole. That's why satellite is so important because we can see things that are happening on a very, very short time frame. Now, let's go ahead and move on, and we're going to take a look at where that low pressure center is actually located, and you can see it is offshore there of Mexico, finally, which means it is going to start to see very quick intensification from this point on, since it isn't located over land anymore, and that's probably why we have seen a lot of intensification over the, overnight, actually, so that's a lot of the reasoning for that. All right, now we're about to move on, and we're going to start getting into some model guidance. We're first going to take a look at NOAA's cone forecast, but then we're going to get into some of that model guidance from the European model, the GFS model, and the Canadian model, and just take a look at what they think for this one. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that cone forecast, like I said, and they are expecting this one to become a tropical storm very very shortly uh, and as you can see it's kind of going to hover around that area that it's at right now for a long time maybe a few days here maybe until about thursday or friday and then by the time we reach about 1 a.m on saturday you can see it finally leaves that circular area where it sticks around and starts to head north by 1 a.m sunday they take this one even further north to about the middle of the gulf of mexico so as we get into the late weekend this one is going to start to really make its move north uh, even Noah is on board at this point. I'm very proud of how we handled this one here at Direct Weather. I think we were probably the earliest source to take an eye at this one and make a forecast days and days and days ago. I was talking about this one already, so I'm very proud of that. We were already eyeballing the chance for the Gulf Coast to get impacted. We've been calling for this for about a week now, and sure enough, it's becoming more likely as the days go on, so I'm very proud of that. So we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that very exciting spaghetti model forecast and just show you how broad things really are at this point and how, how many areas actually could still get impacted by this one. All right, and here we are, and take a look at that, and it's really interesting to take a look at how many areas this could really impact, but again, just as I was saying like a week ago, like I said, still it is looking like somewhere on the Gulf Coast of the United States is going to get impacted no matter how you write it up. Whether it's Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, or Texas, there's only one model here that does not show it reaching the United States, and it just has it going straight back into Mexico, uh, which I think is unlikely at this point given uh, the outlook we're taking a look at right now. Uh, we have multiple models showing Texas, Louisiana, even Mississippi impacts. We have a couple showing a panhandle Florida in through you know, Alabama impact. We have one that shows uh, an impact that heads into Florida and then back into the Atlantic. So basically all outcomes are on the table at this point, but most likely we are going to see a Gulf Coast impact no matter what the intensity of this storm is. And that's the most dangerous factor at this point. Now let's go ahead and look at all the ensemble models and all of their members. A ensemble model is multiple members and then we get the mean average as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Canadian ensemble model quickly. And as you can see, uh, the, the black line is about the mean average of where we're seeing this one go. And as you can see, we do have many of these reaching the Gulf states. I think all of them actually, uh, with the exception of just a couple there. And you can see Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, all on the table here to get impacted by this one according to this model. Let's go ahead and take a look at our GEFS, which is our GFS ensemble model. And same story, somewhere around Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi. This one's a little further east with it, but still the whole, I guess the most important factor here is that both of these models all have it showing a Gulf impact. We don't really know where, and this could really shift, but we know the Gulf states are on uh, need to be on high alert because there's a big risk of this one impacting. And last but 
Certainly not least, as you can see, here's our European Ensemble model, which is known for being the best model in the world. It has this one hitting somewhere in between Texas and Louisiana. Again, that's not really the important part. The important part is that it does show it hitting somewhere in the Gulf states. Uh, this could obviously shift west or east at this point. But look at all of those individual members. The ones that get into orange are showing lower and lower pressure. So this model certainly shows a stronger storm, potentially hurricane level or you know, maybe even category two or three hurricane level on some of these model or members of these models. Uh, and you can see the mean average again is somewhere in eastern Texas, maybe even western Louisiana there. All right, now we're about to move on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at those probabilities of intensity. So we're going like, to take a look at the tropical storm probabilities and the hurricane probabilities. And then we're going to start getting into our individual simulated radar models so we can give you more of a actual impact type forecast here. So first things first, here's your tropical storm probabilities here from this model, which is our European Ensemble model once again. Remember the track it takes, uh, but here's the intensity probabilities. Uh, and at this point, a tropical storm developing within the next three days, so the 2nd of June through the 5th of June, is at about 90 to 100% chance on this model. So we're very, very confident that we will at least see a tropical storm. <clears throat> and then for days two through five, which is June 4th through 7th, you can see this is when it's starting to make its way north. We have about a 20 to 30% chance of hurricane status at this point that could go up or down. Uh, we don't really know. I'm going to need to make many more forecasts and updates for this storm. But at this point, that's the probabilities. Let's go ahead and look at the intensity guidance from all of these models. It works just like our spaghetti models did, except this is for status. In the green is tropical storm status, in the yellow is hurricane status. And at this point, I guess you could say that probably most of these models take it to about a moderate tropical storm and then kind of stay around that status, probably as they head towards the United States. We do have one model there that does take it into category one status at least. So this, again, just like the the areas that the models were showing, this could go up or down just like the track could go east or west. Uh, so we could see this one become a much higher chance of becoming Category 1 or 2, or we could see it just kind of stay a weaker tropical storm. All right, now we're about to move on, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at that simulated radar, the total winds, the total rainfall, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at our official direct weather forecast as of right now for Tropical Depression 3. All right, and here we go. So first things first, we're taking a look at our simulated radar on our GFS model. And this is as of today. This is going to be by about this afternoon. And you can see it has a pretty strong, uh, probably tropical storm by this point there, sitting just in our Gulf of Mexico. However, by the time we reach about tomorrow afternoon, it has it hitting uh, Mexico and going inland again, but then it has another storm developing there to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. By the way, this is a complete outlier from the rest of the models. The rest of the models kind of have it just hovering in the southern Gulf of Mexico and then just shooting north. This model has it kind of redeveloping and then shooting north. And you can see a very heavy area of precipitation there to the east of our low pressure circle. And then you can see it eventually hits Louisiana with a lot of the precipitation going into Florida, though. Here's what those total winds would look like at its peak. And it would be in those greens about 34 to 40 knot winds moving onshore to a lot of states like Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. This has a very broad area of wind. And I, you know, I just don't know how likely this is, this very broad area of wind. Uh, that would definitely be a subtropical storm by this point. And with how warm the waters are, I think it's just going to be a little bit more intense than what the GFS model has been trying to show for this storm. Anyway, here's that total rainfall in the GFS, and you can see even though the storm hits Louisiana, it has most of the rainfall going into Florida, where those reds and oranges indicate 6 to even 10 inches of rain, maybe more. The pinks indicate 2 to 6 inches of rain, just in case you're wondering as well. The blues, half an inch to 2 inches. <clears throat> now here's your Canadian model, and it's kind of the same story, except it has the rain mostly further west. A lot of those reds and oranges are going to be for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and some of the panhandle of Florida, still at about 6 to 10 inches of rain in those kind of red to gold color shades. All right, now for our official direct weather forecast for Tropical Depression 3, here's our seven-day forecast for this one. 
Its location is 29.6 degrees north by 92 degrees west. It has winds of 34 miles per hour. It has a low pressure center of about 1,003 millibars. It's heading west at about 3 miles per hour, so it's pretty much stationary just sitting there in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see, my expectations are that this one is going to head... Uh, well, it's going to stick around for a while, like I said, in that area down there by the Yucatan Peninsula, and then eventually it's going to make its way north, and it could impact anywhere from Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or the Panhandle of Florida at this point. There is a very slight chance that it could impact areas further east in Texas than I was predicting, or maybe even further south west in Texas there than I was predicting, but for the most part, I'm very confident that it will stay within this red area there. Now, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday in our official June outlook, which if you haven't seen it, you should go check that out. Uh, I asked you guys, what kind of conditions are you hoping for this June? And Jane Morrow said, I want the Southwest to have average temperatures, not the above average slash heat waves of your forecast. And I could understand why if you lived in that region, you would be hoping for average temperatures. Unfortunately, it looks to get very, very hot and it does look like we will have heat waves. So I really, really hope you can stay cool and stay indoors. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.